Oh my goodness, we got so much great news to talk about with our Baltimore Ravens. Jumping straight into it, Tyler Linderbaum is back. He is back practicing after missing, well, one, two, three weeks. I don't know how long it's been, but it's felt like forever since Linda Flinder's been out there. But now he is back. He did have on his non-contact jersey. He had on a red jersey, but he was still being physical. But with him being back... Mm, mm, mm. It just makes things so much better. It makes us feel so much better about the Baltimore Ravens offensive line as a whole, even though we haven't even seen the starters yet, because I think a lot of us forget that, because we watched preseason and we saw how things got a little bit rough at time to time, but we have not seen the starters all together. So while I do, I do agree, there is something to worry about, especially when you got two people who have never played these positions in the NFL before yet, in Andrew Voorhees and Daniel Filele, who are both expected to be the starters, Nothing official yet, even though Harbaugh also said today, he said, hey, I did it. I got it. We got to start an offensive line. I know who they are. But he said that he was not going to name them yet. So Harbaugh, we waiting on that. We waiting on it. Are you going to make us wait till week one? Probably. And that's OK. That's OK. Uh, but with those two starting, with Voorhees and Daniel Filele starting at new positions in the NFL for the very first time, it, it does cause for some concern. And I know a lot of Ravens fans are going to be thinking about Ronnie Stanley and the injuries that he's had. Um, with Tyler Linderbaum, he's had a little bit of injuries too, but nothing too crazy to be overly concerned about. Uh, and then at right tackle, you got a rookie starting. So it's, it's, it's some question marks along this offensive line for sure. Uh, so I understand why Ravens fans are concerned about it, but it's one of those things. We just got to see how it goes and hope for the best. Um, but Tyler Linderbaum being back is great. It's beautiful. Welcome back, Linda Flinder. We missed you like crazy. Now, somebody else who's been out of Ravens practice for a little bit has been Money Mark Andrews. And now we know Mark Andrews did get into the car accident um, about, what, two weeks ago. And what was crazy is that he got into the car accident and still showed up to practice that same time. Like, man, you making the rest of us look bad when we call out of work. But he hadn't been to practice since. And initially, I was like, OK, I do expect him to miss at least a couple of days, maybe even a week, uh, because with a car accident, you don't always feel the impact of it right away. It can take a day. It could take even two days to for you to feel whatever you're feeling. Um, but it's been a lot longer than that. Now, of course, we give him Mark Andrews grace because that is something serious. But Harbaugh did say, oh, Mark Andrews, he's good. He's good. Uh, he got something very, very minor, but Mark Andrews is good. He has continued to say that he'll be ready for week one. He said the same thing about Tyler Linderbaum, and Linderbaum came back. Uh, but he also said the same thing about Mark Andrews, but he hasn't been back yet. So uh, that has led a lot of us Ravens fans to wonder what's going on with him. My guy, Agent. Agent, my guy, T'Challa. He asked Jeff Zreba, he said, what, what better way than to go straight to one of the main sources for all of our Baltimore Ravens news? He said, Jeff, what's going on with Mark Andrews? I thought everyone, including him, said he was fine. Were things worse than they initially thought? And that's a real good, legitimate question because we all been wondering the same thing. Like, hey, where is Agent 89? We've been seeing him on the sidelines doing like the preseason games and stuff. But when it comes to practice, he's been in my Hey, and I ain't talking about down here in South Florida. Uh, Jeff Zriebig responded with this. He said, I don't think so. I think it's unrelated to the car accident. When I go back and think about it, the practice or two before the accident, he seemed to be taking fewer reps. So sounds like Mark Andrews was dealing with a little bit of something. But again, Harbaugh has said Mark Andrews will be good. Mark Andrews will be straight. He will be fine for week one. So with Harbaugh, we got to trust that. Because again, like we said about Harbaugh, Years ago, years ago, when Harbaugh gave us an injury update, it'd be like, oh, I don't know about that. You know how Harbaugh be talking. But now when Harbaugh gives us an injury update, he's usually on the money with it. Now, we know being Baltimore Ravens fans that every season that they have is special because they've been a team that hasn't really been around for too long. But the majority of the time, they are a contending team. They're not a team that just goes out without a fight. They're not a team that's just like, oh, you know what? Uh, we we'll wave the white flag. We're giving up. No, they don't normally do that. They don't ever do that. But this season especially, uh, because this one is extra special, because Harbaugh did say today that they are dedicating this season to both Jacoby Jones uh, and Coach Joe D. So Baltimore Ravens, I know you all going to have plenty of special moments, but it's important that you make this extra, extra special, especially with it being the 12-year anniversary, because we know – Ravens, like we've been talking about, every 12 years, that's when they get to the finish line. Not only get to the finish line, but they cross the finish line and they win the ultimate prize. Why not do it this year, too? Might as well. Now, we talked about how amazing it is to have our guy Tyler Linderflinder back 
at practice, our starting center. But what about his backup? Because his backup, just a couple of days ago in a preseason game, we saw him getting carted off and we were thinking, oh, no, Nick Samack, what is happening with him? Is he going to be getting lost now, too? We kept hearing great things about him. We kept hearing promising things about him. Why us? But Nick Mac said, well, hold up, hold up. Why y'all? Why me? Why do I got to miss some time? No, I, I'm going to be out there. And Nick Mac was back at practice today. Harbaugh said that he is dealing with uh, an ankle sprain, but he practiced. So shout out to Nick Mac. My boy said, look, man, I know these roster spots, they hard to come by. Cut down day is literally in less than 24 hours when Ravens got to go from 90 men to 53. And we're going to talk about a couple of roster cuts shortly. But Nick Mac said, look, I'm trying to be on this 53. I ain't playing no games. I ain't messing around. I'm here. Now, while Harbaugh did give us some injury updates, and by the way, he also said Josh Ross was in a car accident. That's why he missed practice today. I guess he didn't want anybody thinking like, oh, did Josh Ross get cut? Because there were some guys who got cut who weren't practicing today. Um, but Harbaugh did say that we're at the point of the season where given injury information, it does not help the team from a competitive standpoint. So, hey, we that when Harbaugh saying stuff like that, that means the regular season is literally right around the corner. But again, he did mention that Linda Baum, Mark Andrews, and also Kyle Hamilton, who wasn't practicing today, that they should all be good uh, for week one, barring a setback. Now, we talked about how there were some players that were missing from practice, uh, but for one of two reasons. Either one, they may be dealing with some things, or two, they were released. Uh, and here go a couple of players that were released, and maybe by the time you see this video, there will be even more that are released but here goes the list as of right now 5 13 p.m it is uh the first cuts were tight end mike riggerman a uh, wide receiver sean ryan uh guard to sean manning and veteran wide receiver russell gage now i don't think any of those come as a surprise at all i know sean ryan i i could see them bringing him back on the practice squad we'll see with russell gage um just i think the injuries the injuries and when, when the Baltimore Ravens signed him, we hadn't really heard anything about him standing out in practice or even in the preseason games, or anything like that. So uh, I don't think any of these moves are a shocker at all. Now, something that could have a huge impact on the Baltimore Ravens roster is something that literally got changed today. Uh, this came from Tom Pelissero. says, important note, as teams construct their initial 53-man rosters, NFL teams were informed that the NFLPA vetoed the revised emergency third quarterback rule that would have allowed teams to elevate a bona fide QB from the practice squad an unlimited number of times. And that was such a great rule because that made it easier for teams to carry a third quarterback because you can have them on a practice squad. With a practice squad, you know you have a certain amount of practice squad elevations you can use for each player on there. And then after you run out of elevations, you either got to add them to the active roster or you got to release them so they can clear waivers and then you can sign them back to the active roster again or they could end up signing somewhere else. But with this rule, like you were set. You could have your third QB. He wouldn't even have to be on a 53-man roster. So you could have your 53-man roster and your third QB. So you were good to go. But they said no more. They said, so the rule reverted to the 2023 version, which says the emergency third quarterback must be on the 53-man roster and not an elevation. So with the Baltimore Ravens, um, they, Lamar Jackson, Josh Johnson, those are going to be your QB1 and QB2. Now for QB3, are you going to have somebody, uh, are you going to have a Devin Leary uh, or Emory Jones actually on the roster? So it's either all or nothing. That's it. Like, it ain't no, oh, in no, no, no. It's either you have them on the roster or you don't have them, th them on the roster. And now they can still be on a practice squad and they can be called up. But would you really want to use a practice squad call up for a third QB? I doubt it. I got to apologize because I really misspoke the other day and I'm like, I was thinking about it today. I'm like, man, what was going on with me? Because um, I know we had a question yesterday. As a matter of fact, somebody asked about uh, the, the, the Houston Texans being a sneaky team to possibly trade with for the Baltimore Ravens at the wide receiver position. Uh, they talked about Noah Brown and they mentioned, I know they mentioned somebody else too. And I was thinking, well, while that will be nice, would the Ravens really want to give up some assets for somebody who would be a third or fourth, uh, maybe even fifth wide receiver on the Baltimore Ravens depth chart just simply because of how they run their offense, simply because of everybody who would be in front of them on a depth chart? But then I thought about it. I said, wait a minute. 
just I remember last week talking about it. I, I just wish how on offense the Baltimore Ravens would build their team on offense the way they do on defense to where they have this crazy amount of depth to where they always looking to add players. They always looking to make stuff better. And we've said it before on here, too, where if you add quality depth, that makes a, a backup that much better. So that gives you that much quality. So. This report came out today. It says, sources, multiple teams have reached out to the Houston Texans to see if wide receiver John Metchie III will be available in a trade due to the plethora of receivers on their roster. It's unclear if Houston would move him, but several teams are keeping a close eye. Uh, the former second-round pick out of Alabama had 10 catches for 100 yards and a touchdown in the preseason. So John Metchie heating up, um, and the talks about him are heating up as well. So... He's obviously a playmaker uh, when he was in college. Not the fastest, but he is somebody that they get in open field and you ain't going to catch him. He, he, he's going he going for six. So could the Ravens trade for the John Mechie, the third? They could. And you know what? Honestly, I wouldn't be mad at it because like we talked about, you improve the depth. You improve the quality of the depth. That means you improve the overall roster of the team. Now, somebody else who could possibly be available and well, not only for the Baltimore Ravens, but for the entire NFL, is former Baltimore Raven who left the Ravens and really made a name for himself. He, I know he's been dealing with some injuries, though, uh, but he's back now, even scoring touchdowns in the preseason, and that is Broncos wide receiver Tim Patrick. Let's read the report uh, from Mike Cliss on him. He said, with significant depth and talent at wide receiver, Broncos are moving on from popular veteran Tim Patrick, per source. See, initially when I saw that, I'm thinking, oh, they, oh, oh, he's a free agent? You can just sign him up? Oh, that's it? Oh, that's sweet. But no. It says, Broncos are currently exploring trade possibilities for Patrick, who is generating strong interest on, in, on the market in advance of Tuesday's roster cut-down deadline. So, Broncos basically had them put out this report. Why? Because they want to move on from him, but they don't want to do it for free. They want somebody to send a low draft pick. So I could see Tim Patrick getting traded for like a six-round draft pick, a fifth or sixth-round draft pick, maybe even a seventh. But this is basically Broncos, their last pitch to the NFL, saying, hey, come get Tim Patrick. He's available. You could have him for cheap. All you got to do is let us know. Now, speaking of wide receivers, we got this Chiefs-Ravens game coming up in 10 days from now. So it's it's right there, y'all. We like right there a week and a half away. Um, but a receiver that's been talked about a lot, former Baltimore Raven, our guy Hollywood Brown. He was actually back at Chiefs practice today, but wait, 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 wait. He did not practice, though. So he was just standing around and whatnot. So we're going to see. Like, he got – if he's going to play – I don't know if he will or not, but I hope he does. But I don't. I also don't want him to rush anything, especially for the, the long term, the longevity of his career. But I would love for him to be back in that game because I want this Ravens Chiefs game. I want the Chiefs at their best. I wish the Ravens could be at their best. And I know both teams; they're not going to be one thousand percent healthy, anything like that, because they're going to be injuries on both sides. Like we we missing Keith Mitchell. He would have been a huge part of this game. They could be missing Hollywood Brown. We'll see. I know they just signed Juju Smith-Schuster back again. So Juju Smith-Schuster is a chief again. Um, now, I did see Trey Wingo say that he wonders if them signing Juju Smith-Schuster today, that they might have finally come out with a suspension for wide receiver Rasheed Rice with that whole hit and run situation. We'll see. That's something to keep an eye on. But with Hollywood, I guess over these next couple of days, we'll see if he starts doing some kind of practice for the Kansas City Chiefs to see if he may be available for that week one game against our Baltimore Ravens. Now, we're shortly approaching my favorite part of the videos where we get to answer you all's questions that you send in. But before we get into it, I got to give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy, Kedrick. See, I was a little scared. When I read this name at first because I thought it said Kendrick and I was thinking, oh, please, please don't make no this song about me. My little heart can't take it, man. I don't want to be sitting here sad and whatnot and contemplating what I'm going to do. But it said Kedrick. So I appreciate you being a team. Keep it clean. Patreon, I appreciate you showing love uh, and extra support to the channel, man. I, 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 I really, really, really do, man. So let's get on with these questions because I know y'all brought it. Next question came from my guy, Ace. He said, what's up, Engraven? I got one question. Why is Patrick McCurry uh, not being considered for the starting right guard spot? I know I don't, spend que I don't send questions often, but I do watch every day. Also, congrats on the baby girl. Hey, I appreciate you, Ace. Shout out to my guy, Ace, man, because he's been around for years, man. 
literal years and i appreciate it. and i know a lot of y'all been around for years but i appreciate but man I, I remember my guy ace from super long time ago sending in questions and stuff and just always being a big part of the channel so i appreciate you a lot man thank you for your support really over the years man so thank you I, a whole lot now um he about pat mccarty with the uh, not being considered for the right guard spot um again i know we talked about this before a little bit i just really think they like him as a sixth man they like him as somebody who can be sort of a relief pitcher, um, somebody who can is willing and able to sub. But like we have said before, uh, in regards to what you're saying, if he's one of your best five offensive linemen, you got to have him out there. <laughs> like, forget all that six man stuff. He need to be one of the starting five if if he is one of your best. But again, Hob always says that he always talks about, hey, we're gonna play the five best offensive linemen. Um, so. If he's not the starter at right guard and Harbaugh is saying we're going to play the the five best, is Daniel Filele looking better than Pat McCarry to the Baltimore Ravens? He could be. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, I was watching Coach make his 53-man roster prediction. Shout out to Coach Evan Sip to Tally. He said, and one of your input on some moves his subscribers were saying, how would you feel if we kept Wade by cutting Hardy? I could see that. I, I, I could see that happening. Uh, especially if I wonder if in practice or something when the media wasn't out there when the fans weren't out there if they possibly tried Dayton Wade at kick and punt return because he's shifty he got moves in so I feel like somebody like him with his skill set would fit in good at return man like again Zay Flowers Zay Flowers would be an excellent punt returner I, now I am not advocating for him to be I'm just saying because of his skill set the type of receiver that he is, the way he plays, he will be an excellent returner. Baltimore Ravens, do not put him at kick or punt return. Do not do that. I know y'all not going to, but do not do that. But anyway, Dayton Wade would be awesome for that job. So uh, if they were to keep Wade by cutting Hardy, it's a tough business, but I, I would not be mad if they did that because Dayton Wade, yeah, he, he got some. He also said, and keep Sanusi Kane and Bo Braid. By cutting Pepe Williams and Ardarius Washington. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Ooh, boy. That, wow. I don't, ooh. Pepe, and, like, wow. I could see one or the other. I, I think Ardarius stays for sure. I, I think Ardarius stays for sure. Pepe Williams. Like, I was looking at Jeff Zrebic, his roster predictions. And he had Pepe Williams on the outside looking in. I was like, whoa. But, again, it's cutthroat. But he also had Bo Braid and Sanusi Kane both making it at safety. And I was like, oh, oh okay, Jeff. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't go with both, like keeping Kane and Braid by cutting Pepe and Ardarius, because Ardarius, I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, but Kane and Braid, they could possibly make it. Pepe, oh, I, I figured Pepe right now, I felt felt like he was straight. I, I felt like he had, unless Ravens like do some of those, those trades, like the Broncos are doing with Tim Patrick, maybe the Ravens are talking to some people about some players on the back end of their roster that they want to keep, but they're not, so they may trade them away for like a low draft pick or something like that. He also said, uh, Wade can be special, and we only get getting hardy for kick return, but I feel like Hill and Wallace uh, can hold that position down and maybe Wade if given the opportunity. Oh, yeah, yeah, kick return. Yeah, Justice Hill has been, he has been doing kick return for a while. You're right about that. You know what? Thank you for bringing that up because I forget about that a lot. Whenever we talk about the kick return, punt return, we talked about Tyler Wallace, but whenever, whenever we talk about kick return, I forget that Justice Hill, that he does that. I don't even be thinking about him for that. But, yeah, that, that is another option. So thank you for bringing that up. He said, um, I love Kane and Bray. I love their game, and they've shown that they have that play like a Raven mentality. Oh, they really do. And that hit like a Raven mentality, too. Uh, he said, Pepe and Ardarius have consistently been injured. And when given the opportunity, have not been impressive at all this preseason, in my opinion. Really? You said, oh, I disagree, but okay. He said, we have to start looking at the bigger picture. Uh, and Wade, Kane, and Braid should be in the frame. Side note, I saw one of your subscribers brought up the Texans wide receiver Woods and Noah. But I would love if we looked at Mechie the third as well from the Texans. See, we just, we talked about that a little earlier. He said, and I also think we bring back Cook until Mitchell, oh, Dalvin Cook, until Mitchell is ready to go. See, I would, I would like that because, yeah, somebody, a veteran, you know the game, he, and, and this would be his second time in this playbook. So, let's see, man. What's, I just don't think it's going to happen, but I would like it if it did. Um, he said, Tim O'Day's still kick off. So, what is your game one predictions, also score prediction? Well, game predictions, Ravens win. Ravens win. Um, I've got no doubt in my mind that the Baltimore Ravens win. 
Baltimore Ravens, don't make me look stupid. Don't make me feel stupid. <laughs> Like it's it's week one, man. It's it's week one. Ravens usually do good in week one. Chiefs usually start off a bit slow. So yeah, I, I but I am assuming that the Ravens are gonna win that game. Score predictions. Uh Ravens too much, Chiefs too little. I <laughs> He said I would say sorry for the long one, but you read uh much, much longer. That's that's true. That's true. That's true. We cause yeah, you already know, man. He said, always keep it clean and just like some Ravens players this week. I'm out. Ooh boy. And he he also said, um, who is your sleeper team this year? And which top team last year might not make the playoffs this year? I think the Bills will not make the playoffs. And my sleeper team is the Falcons and also the Titans and the Commanders. Yeah, Falcon Falcons a sneaky one. That's a good one. That's a good one for uh that, that's a real good one. Um now I sleeper team for me, I would actually say Pittsburgh. I would say Pittsburgh Steelers. Reason being because obviously Ravens, we know Ravens are big and bad. They the big bad Ravens. Uh, we got to finish in the playoffs, but this will be the year that they do that. Um, but the Steelers, they just they keep having our number for whatever reason may be. They just keep having the Baltimore Ravens number. And I know there's a lot of context. There've been some games with Lamar's been out. There's been some games with Lamar been in, and the Steelers are still having our number. Um, but with that being said, uh, a big thing for them. They will kind of they, they they always kind of float around that whole what nine and eight or before it would be like nine and seven eight and eight no oh, they don't have a losing record okay yeah we get it it's and this that stat is so mm, it's like it's kind of like cringy almost because it's like yeah you don't have a losing record but it's technically a winning record but it's not really a winning record you get it like. Ain't nobody, oh, hey, we were 9 and 8 this year. Let's go, baby. I'm like, no, who, who puffing out that chest for 9 and 8? Like, that's not a winner's record. It's a winning record, but it's not a winner's record. But anyway, um, their quarterback play has been uh, for years, for years. Uh, but they still, you still keep them afloat. So just the reason why I say they are a sleeper team this year is because if they, whether it's Russell Wilson, whether it's Justin Fields, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, I do not think that Russell Wilson is as bad as so many people put him out there to be. With Justin Fields, I think for him, I think it's the same case, but I think for him, he just, he was not in a good situation over there in Chicago. And Chicago, they got done with him early. They had their sights set on Caleb Williams. Once Caleb Williams was coming out of the draft, and they were like, oh, we got, oh, okay, we got number one pick. Oh, let's go. Yeah. I think that they were done with Justin Fields before he even. So, yeah, I don't think they, that they really put all their eggs into the Justin Fields basket in Chicago. Um, now, with him in a different situation, um, I think that he this is a much better situation for him. Uh, so whatever route the Steelers end up going, uh, their quarterback situation. I mean, the last quarterback was Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett has been Mason Rudolph. It's been Devlin Duck Hodges. It's been... Um, who else? I, I, I forget who else after Ben Roethlisberger. But it ain't been pretty is what I'm saying. It ain't been pretty. But, again, they've been staying afloat. So I think with better QB play, it ain't even got to be crazy, but, but with better QB play, especially and now with Justin Fields now, the, that playmaking ability is there, man. That is, is, is there. So, yeah, man, if, if you can get better QB play, better playmaking ability, then I, I feel like they could be. That's why I feel like they are a sleeper team uh, in my opinion.